you to remember Jesus here concluding his time with the disciples there in the upper room. And 13 through 16, he taught us some great doctrines, great preparation for his departure for the disciples. And now here in chapter 17, he prays in preparation for regarding the, the trials and abuse and suffering and then, of course, Calvary. <clears throat> but in the midst of that, he prays more for us than he does for himself here in John 17. And so tonight we're going to look at 6 through 16 of John 17. Beginning in verse 6, Jesus said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and that they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. All and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated, hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not. So that's the title, Not of the World. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you would now speak to our hearts through your precious and powerful word. May Jesus Christ be magnified in this time. In his name we ask this. Amen. <clears throat> so Jesus here uh, praying and, and, and reminding the disciples and us that we are not of the world. He is not of the world. And this is important. As we, as we will see later on in the passage, because we live in the world, but we're not of the world, which is a very, very tough balance for Christians, isn't it? Um, but before we get to that part, Jesus is encouraging us by reminding us that, first of all, in verse 8, we have his word. Praise the Lord. He said, I've given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Hallelujah. He came and gave us his word. We have it now in our hands, as we've been talking about in Sunday school, and it has, as, as, I, as I preached, so many applications for us as Christians. It protects us, it grows us, we could go on and on, but as we read in 2 Timothy 3.17, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. This is, this is the word of God that Jesus has given us, and that is one of the ways that we are able to stand against the wickedness of the world. The second way, he remember, reminds us in verse 9, he says, I pray for them. He says, I'm not praying for the world, but I'm praying for them that you've given me, Lord. He's praying for his disciples. He's praying for us, those that come to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ prays for us. He intercedes for us, the Bible teaches, even now in heaven. Go to Romans 8 and verse 34, and we'll see this, but... The second reason why we're able to stand against this world, not only do we have his word, but we have his intercession. And this is so important for us to grasp, is that Jesus Christ, as our great high priest, intercedes for us in heaven. And, and it's a powerful truth. Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Jesus intercedes for us. He was interceding for them in this prayer and us. And the Bible teaches that when he went back to heaven, he now intercedes in heaven for us. He maketh intercession for us. So we are able to stand against the world because we have his word. 
and because we have his daily intercession. But on, on beyond that, we have his security. Look what he said there in verse 12, or verse 11. And now I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I'm come to thee. Holy Father, keep them. He's praying for us and for the disciples. Keep them through thine own name. Then he says in verse 12, While I was yet with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. And those that thou gavest me, I've kept. And of course the Bible teaches that we are kept by the Lord. We are secure in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah for this great truth. <clears throat> Pray, on, uh, as I mentioned on Sunday, we start our Bible study with the Tanadu at 1.30 and the first one is on eternal security. Which is Sadly, is controversial among Christianity. It shouldn't be because it's just so clear. But <clears throat> we are kept by Jesus. Remember, he said in John chapter 10, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Jesus said, Once we become his sheep, we will never perish. <clears throat> he says in John 6 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Jesus will never cast us out. Paul said, I know whom I believe, 2 Timothy 1, 12. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that, which I've committed unto him against that day. And that's what he's saying here, Lord, please keep them as I've kept them. <clears throat> Paul said in Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very, very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We could go on the rest of the evening talking about the security that we have because we are in Jesus Christ. Another reason we can stand against the world is because of the security that we have and the confidence that it breeds when we know we're secure in Christ. We're standing on the foundation that can't be moved, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have his word, we have his intercession, we have his security, and lastly in verse 13 he says, And now come I to thee that these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. We have the joy of the Lord. The world doesn't have that. But we do as God's children. Remember he told us back in chapter 16 about this joy. Let's look at it again. Verse 22. <clears throat> and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Verse 24. Hitherto ye ask nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. So now we're about to talk about the world, the fact that we're in the world, but we can stand against this whole world because we have the word of God to strengthen and grow us. Because we have the intercession and the help of Jesus Christ He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because we have his security of knowing that we are now safe in Christ. That we will not be lost or cast away. And then we have the joy that only God can give. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy that comes from knowing we have salvation. So now the heart of this passage here in verse 14. He says, I've given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Once we become Christians, we become part of a new family. Amen? We all have the same Heavenly Father. Before that, we had a different father. His name was Satan. But now we have our Heavenly Father, and we are not of this world. Praise the Lord. Um, look at chapter 15, just back two chapters, verse 18. Jesus said, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. So Jesus is driving home the point that we are not of this world. And now 1 John 3 says, behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Right? We're told in John 1, he came into his own and his own received him not. The world didn't know who was walking in their midst, God in the flesh. And they don't know us. 
because we're of a different family. We're, we have a different destiny, which is heaven. It's all different. We are not of this world. But we're in the world. And that's the balance that Jesus is praying about here in verse 15 especially. Very important verse. Every Christian should memorize it. He says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. You see what he's saying? He says, they're not of the world, but I'm not praying, Heavenly Father, that you remove them from the world. I'm praying that you keep them from the evil. Now, why is that? Well, because the world needs us. And so we're to be not of the world, but we're to be in the world. And again, what a balance that is for us. You know, we in the past, Christian groups have decided to run and hide from the world and form little communes and whatever, because they know they're not of the world, so they just flee from the world. But that's not God's will. That we hide from the world. Notice in Matthew chapter 5, if you would, verse 13, where Jesus makes it very clear that the world, like I said earlier, needs us. And that's why he said, Lord, I don't pray that you take them out. I just pray that you keep them from the evil. Matthew 5, 13, ye are the salt of the earth. So we're the salt. If the salt have lost its savor... Wherever shall it be salted is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Look at the next verse. Ye are the light of the world. But Jesus said we, he's speaking to us, we're to be the salt, we're to be the light. If we are taken out of the world, we can't be the salt and the light, can we? The world needs us. They need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 15. Where God says the same thing, that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And again, that is one of the toughest tight ropes we have to walk from the day we get saved till we leave, isn't it? That we're in it, but we're not of it. And we're not to be of it. In other words, we're to be separate from it. Uh, Philippians 2.15, that ye be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst. So that's us. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So even Paul here is saying, you're in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. He's not referring to a specific nation. He's talking about the devil's nation, the world. He says, we're in the midst of it, but we're not of it. But we are to be shining as lights in the world. So Jesus said... Here in verse 15, after encouraging us that, that we have his security, we have his joy, we have his intercession, we have his word, he says, they're not of the world, and I'm not of the world, but I don't pray that you take them out of the world, Lord, but verse 15 of John 17, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. And that is the balance that, that we always need to be after. That we don't run and hide from the world, that we be the salt, that we be the light, that we shine, but that we stay away from the evil. And that's a tough balance for Christians. Uh, but it's all through the scriptures that we're to be separate from this whole world. Uh, most of us know Romans 12, 1. Very well, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But the next verse says, and be not conformed to this world. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed. And John says in 1 John uh, chapter 2, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. James said, in James, let's turn there, James 4, 4, that we aren't to be a friend of this world. Now that doesn't mean we shouldn't be a friend to a lost person. We should. We should love them. We should tell them about Jesus. But we're not to be a friend of the world, of the world system, and the world sin. Notice James 4, 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Jesus said you can't be a friend of both. You can't be a friend of God and a friend of the world simultaneously. And 
so we have to walk this, this tightrope that we are not of the world, but we are in the world. But we need to stay away from the evil. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That's us. We're not going to have fellowship with the sin of the world. We are to witness to the lost. We're to love them. We're to help them meet their needs. We're to encourage them that they need Jesus Christ. If they have a need, we're to meet it. But we're not to be a friend of this world system because we're not of the world. As a matter of fact, as James says, if we choose to be a friend of the world, now we've made ourselves God's enemy, which we obviously don't want to do. <clears throat> So what an encouragement from Christ. You have my joy. You have my word. You have my security. You have my presence and my intercession. Because you're going to need it. Because I'm about to leave. And you're going to be in this world. And this world is wicked. And it's run by the devil. He's the God of this world. And as he's praying for his disciples. He says, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of it. I just pray that you keep them from the evil. And let's remember, that's God's will for us too. Not that we run and hide from the world, but that we stay away from the evil and that we be that light and that salt that Jesus sent us to be. That we make a difference for the lost, just like someone did for us. So we are not of the world, which means we're not to be of the evil, but we are to be the light and the salt. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your...